Hello everybody, Ragtag Segby here. Welcome to the next episode. But before we get to the gameplay, I do want to show something. Something which is the intro to this game. After we get past it, there we go. What do you thought of that? Definitely really epic at the end. But otherwise, let's get to the game. For some reason, you don't see that intro when you first boot up the game. You're just automatically thrown into the game if it's a new file. You have to see that intro from saving, then leaving the game if you want to see that intro. Hey, well, we're back here. Here, so in the last episode, we went to check out the lake and got attacked by some Pokemon. We took um, we took a Pokemon from the briefcase, which in this case would be Chimchar here. But we're gonna have to return it because it's technically not ours. We didn't have any choice in using people's Pokemon, right? But those Pokemon belong to them. They want them back, won't they? But this is the first Pokemon I've ever battled with. I wish I could grow tougher with this little guy. I don't feel like talking. Let's go. And maybe walking a little slower when we went into the lake. So, oh, there they are. Hey, it's those people. Is that old guy staring at us? Hmm. I heard from Dawn that you used our Pokemon. Let me see them, please. Hmm. Chimchar and Piplo. Hmm, I see. That's how it is. Dawn, I'm going back to my lab. Uh, okay, Professor. Please wait for me. I think you should visit our lab later. Okay, see you. What was all that craziness about? I mean, if he was angry, he could have just yelled at us or whatever. And didn't he want his Pokemon back? Donnie, we should go home too. What's up, dear? Wow, I can't believe that happened to you. I'm ever glad that both you and Barry are unharmed. The professor you mentioned is most likely Professor Rowan from Sanjin Town. I heard that he's well known for his studies on Pokemon. I hear he's also quite intimidating. 
Donnie, I think you need to visit him in Sanjin Town. You need to properly explain why you had no choice but to use his Pokemon. Don't worry, I'm sure he will understand. Oh, I know. Donnie, put these on. Get a pair of running shoes. Going to Sanjin Town is like an adventure in itself, right? With those running shoes, you can get to faraway places much faster. Okay, let me read the instructions. Tilt the left stick firmly and, and dash about faster than ever before. Put on the running shoes and blaze new trails of adventure. Well, isn't that just nifty? So we can run! This is automatic when you're using the stick. Uh, if you want to walk uh, normally, you just slightly tilt or you use the D-pad. Add to walk normally. Walking slowly makes you walk in a grid faction, which walking in a grid faction can actually be very helpful in traversing certain areas. While running makes you obviously run, but you can go in any direction, even diagonal. If you need to learn more about any function out... Oh, we don't have that item yet. I thought we would have the manual in here that can teach us uh, various things, but I guess we don't have that exactly yet. She'll read you the uh, instructions again if you're just not too sure, but... This makes traveling through the region much faster and... Especially since you don't have to hold down the but hold down a button for running shoes. It's just tilt the stick and let's go. And thankfully, I believe they did not jack up the encounter rates when you're running it for this game. Since you're most likely gonna be running 95% of it the end of the time. While Pokemon lurk in tall grass, they can come bursting out at any time. So if you're wanting, wanting to battle wild Pokemon, just walk the tall grass. If you want to avoid wild Pokemon, stay out of the tall grass. So, um, because this is based on Diamond and Pearl, most in, uh, encounters are going to be random encounters. So if you walk in the grass, you're going to get randomly attacked by a random Pokemon. Um, what he does not tell you is that um, in, in certain areas, such like surfing on water or in caves, the entire area is con is considered um, uh, something that wild Pokemon can encounter you in. So in situations like that, it is impossible to to avoid Pokemon. Where in normal routes, if you see uh, grass, if you can get around it, you can avoid unnecessarily wild encounters. If you're not looking for a fight, or if you're too badly hurt, or and you want to try and avoid battles as much as possible. If your Pokemon's health, its HP is getting low, you should go home and get some rest. Um, basically what she tells you there, I think the next time you go back to Twinleaf, your mother will basically act as a Pokemon Center. Um, you rarely ever need to go back to the- I think that's been a staple throughout the entire of the Pokemon- entirety of the Pokemon series. Thing is, you rarely ever need to go back. <laughs> So, um, it's only there for, for, um, for convenience sake if you happen to be in the area. Hi, I work at the Pokemart. Did you know that Pokemon's health is measured by hit points, HP for short? If a Pokemon runs out of HP, it faints and can't battle anymore. If a Pokemon's HP gets low, you should heal it with a potion. Here, let me give you some potions as a, as a sample. These ones are free. They will automatically go in your bag's medical pocket. I wish stuff that I put in my bag went, automatically went into the bag. It would make packing so much easier. We're getting attacked by a beetle. So here's an example of random encounters. Uh, unlike in Sword and Shield, where it was a mixture of overworld encounters and randoms, uh, for the most part, with a few exceptions, uh, we, uh, pretty much every encounter in this game is a random encounter, so you do not know what you're going to be running into.
So if you're planning on catching lots of Pokemon, you may need to look up, um, you may need to stay in the route for a little while, and it also helps to look up uh, sites like Bubble Garden and Celebi Net to see what Pokemon can be found in the area. If you're hoping to capture all the Pokemon and complete the Pokedex. But yeah, uh, every uh, random fight is a random encounter. Uh, again, there is one or two areas where there's an exception to that rule. But for the most part, most of your encounters are going to be random. Which I guess it's nice since they're being faithful. You know, back in the day, you couldn't see what you were going to encounter, but still, I do love the recent Pokemon games where you can see the Pokemon in the overworld. So that way you can go after what you want, instead of hoping you run into it. With obviously maybe a, like one or two Pokemon being exclusive to random encounters. That ledge is one way. Jump down for a shortcut to Twinleaf Town. Oh, there you are! Please come with me, the professor's waiting. This is it, our Pokemon Research Lab. Let's go! Blah! What the? Oh, it's you, Donnie. That old guy, he's not so scary yet. He has he totally out there. Aw, it doesn't matter, Donnie. I'm out of here, see you later. Wow, what was that? Your friend sure seems to be really impatient. Well, anyway, let's go inside. Finally, you have come. Donnie, was it? Let me see that Pokemon again. I see. This Pokemon seems to be rather happy. Alright then. I will give you that Chimchar to you as a gift. Now that it is yours, would you like to give it a nickname? Why, of course. I have the perfect nickname written down on my notes right here for this particular Chimchar. Seeing that it is a monkey and uh, Sinnoh is based on Japan, um, I thought this name would be kind of fitting for this Pokemon, Hideyoshi. Hmm, okay, I see. Are you happy with that nickname? Your friend Barry told me what happened at the lake. I heard that you battled very well despite it being your first time. And from what I can see, there is a growing bond between you and, and that Pokemon, though it is still young. That is why I would like to entrust you with Chimchar. I'm so glad that you're kind towards Pokemon. If you weren't, I would- I do have to- Oh, I just can't say it. Ahem. <clears throat> Let's move on to the main topic. There is something I want you to do for me. My name is Rowan. I study Pokemon. First of all, I want to know exactly what kinds of Pokemon live in the Sinnoh region. To do so, it is necessary to collect data using the Pokedex. This is what I wish to ask of you. I want to entrust you with this Pokedex. Will you use it to record data on all the Pokemon in Sinnoh for me? Ah, yes. Hmm, good answer. We've gotten our Pokedex. That Pokedex is a very high-tech device. It will automatically record data on every kind of Pokemon you encounter. Donnie, I may ask you to go oh, anywhere and meet every kind of... Go, yeah, go anywhere. I thought I, I, thought I misread that for a second. And meet every kind of Pokemon in this region. I got, I got one too. When you walked up on Route 201 with your Pokemon, what did you feel? I have lived for 60 long years. Even now, I get the thrill when I, when I am with a Pokemon. 
Now, you should know that there are countless Pokemon in this world. That means there are just... That, bleh, that, that means there are just as many thrills waiting for you out there. Now go. Donnie, I am glad your adventure begins now. The Pokemon that I used for the first time was Turtwig. Um, Dawn, or uh, if you're the female protagonist, uh, Lucas, will have the starter that is weak to yours. So because I chose Tim Chimchar, she has Turtwig. If you choose Piplup, she will have Chimchar, and if you choose, um, and if you choose Turtwig, she will have Piplup. If you would have chosen Turtwig at the lake, we, we do have the same Pokemon now. Not that it matters, but... Anyway, I'm Dawn. I also help the professor add pages to the Pokedex. So, in a sense, I'm just like you. I just got a little head start on you, that's all. I'll be happy to teach you things. Glad to meet you, Dawn. Go on. Donnie, your grand adventure awaits you. Professor Rowan invited a new poke I invited invented a new Pokédex while working alongside a professor from the Kanto region. Hmm, uh, the professor from the Kanto region. I wonder who that is. I'm Don's father. I'll be happy to assist you on your quest for the professor. <laughs> uh, I'm sure we can count on you. Anyway, let's have a quick look around the lab. It's got like a kitchen here. Tasty sweets, apparently. The screen is filled with Pacific terms and acomatic writings that are that is impossible to figure out. Yeah, you need like a college degree if you want to do that kind of stuff. Anyway, we've got our Pokedex. So basically, if we see a Pokemon, it will be here, but if we want to get any information related to the Pokemon, such like its height, weight, footprint, and, and general information about it, you have to have owned the Pokemon at some point. Either by catching it in the wild, or by getting it from a trade. Or being gift, gifted to you for certain means. So it's like Chimchar's Pokedex entry here. It actually steers... It, it, it agilely scales steer, sheer cliffs to live, to live on top of craggy mountains. Its fire is put out when it sleeps. You can also listen to a Pokemon's cry. You can pause it if you want. Get some motions. You can check the Pokemon's height and weight. So here we'll give you a silhouette, giving you an idea on the Pokemon's size compared to the size of like an average um, average um, person especially since I think we're like 12 or 13 years old so and you can also check the weight so in this case Chimchar is extremely white a uh, uh, lightweight compared to your average human and just fun stuff like that Okay, Donnie, I'll act as your mentor. I got a bit more experience than you as a trainer and as the professor's assistant. Okay, follow me. This building with the red roof is the Pokemon Center. It is the place that heals Pokemon that have been hurt in battle. You can find a Pokemon Center in most towns. The building with the blue roof over there is the Pokemon. It's a shop where you can buy and sell items and medicine. And 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 as you can see, because they're being faithful, uh, Pokemon centers and shops are two separate buildings. They are not combined into one. So just keep that in mind for your shopping needs, that the Pokemon is separate from the Pokemon Center in this game. Donnie. Since you are a novice trainer, you won't be able to buy many kinds of merchandise. But don't let it bother you. And what Dawn says there is true. The items that are on sale are based on the Pokemart's location, 
as certain Pokemarts do sell certain items. And also based on how many badges you have. The more badges you get, the more they update their inventory. Okay, so you can get access to better items. Oh, that's right, Donnie. Don't you need to let your family know that you're going to, you're going to be helping Professor Rowan? With the Pokedex? You may need to travel pretty far, so I think you should let someone know. Oh, but before you go, heal up your Pokemon at the Pokemon Center. It will be a lot less scary that way. Okay, bye now. And off she goes. So before we head back home, let's check out Sandrum Town. So I don't forget what happens until now. Oh, I better save this. There, now I can take a break. Oh wow, Pokemon are so cool, I wish I had some. You can you can help uh, viewers get stronger by having them battle. Sandrum Town, the town of sand. It's basically right next to a beach. And this house, I believe, uh, if you talk to the sign outside, is uh, Dawn slash Lucas's home. Who are you? Oh, you're Donnie? Hey, you're doing that Pokedex thingy for the professor. Wow, that's the same as my big sister. Go for it. Ah, so, oh, that Rowan fellow is back. He's quite a remarkable man. He's been studying Pokemon since way, way back. My son and grandchild. I'll help Rowan with his studies now. Hmm. Interesting trivia. There are two beds up here. Adventure rules number one. The X button opens the menu. Adventure rules number two. Record or your progress with save. There's nothing else on here. Now this also brings to another feature, TVs. I can't remember if I mentioned this in the previous episode, but you want to check TVs whenever you enter a building. As again, you can learn, they're basically little fun things, but you will get updates related to your adventure as you do stuff. But I hope to show some of those off. Yep, Dawn's house. That thing you have, it's a Pokedex, isn't it? Now you're off to see all kinds of Pokemon. Lucky you. Pokemon grow steadily stronger from battling against other Pokemon. At first, you should heal your Pokemon regularly at Pokemon Centers while you're leveling them up. A good trainer is one that takes care er, not to let their Pokemon faint from losing HP. Yeah, so pretty much everybody in this town is going to be telling you, like, hey, this is how you should be as a trainer. Because again, we're pretty much in, like, in the early areas, so the game does try to tutorial you. It's just this time you actually have to actively talk to people, unlike in the recent games where they kind of force the tutorials on you, which I don't mind, but still, I can understand why they do it. If you come across a Pokemon, you just, you, you just gotta have... Have fro Pokeball. Never leave home without one. Live by that advice. Never go out and adventure without a Pokeball. If Pokemon loses all its HP, it can't battle anymore. I'm buying lots of potions to, to avoid having that happen. So here we can currently have access to Pokeballs, potions, antidotes, which I... I don't think there's much Pokemon that can poison you in this part of the game. I think there's one, but still, um, it shouldn't be that hard, um, shouldn't be, it should not be easy to get poisoned. Paralysis I can understand, because I think there's like one or two electric types you can encounter on the way, uh, in the early parts of the game. These are more useful later on. Right now, I just want to buy some Pokeballs. I'll buy 10 Pokeballs for like 200 bucks, 200 bucks, 2,000 bucks, which is basically the equivalent of like, yeah, it would be the equivalent of like 200 bucks, because isn't this based on yen? Here you are. Thank you. And have one Premier Ball on the house. If you ever buy any Pokeballs in a bulk of 10, you will get one Premier Ball per uh, 10 you buy. 
Uh, the Premier Ball, as if I remember correctly, does not have any special abilities to it, nor is it capture rate better than the standard Pokeball. Matter of fact, I think it's the same capture rate as the standard Pokeball. It just it looks nicer. The local club is located at the top floor of any Pokemon Center. There you can have all sorts of fun with your friends. So yeah, this uh, going up, I don't know if we can go up here right now. Yeah, so basically up here is where you will do a lot of your local stuff. And I think this also has wireless communication. Uh, but don't expect anything like complex like in Sword and Shield. Because again, the competitive uh, scene is on Sword and Shield currently. Talk to the nice lady at the counter and hand her, hand her your Pokemon. She will restore your Pokemon to perfect health, health in no time at all. Hello, welcome to the Pokemon Center. We'll restore your tired Pokemon to full health. Would you like to rest your Pokemon? Why, yes. Okay, I'll take your Pokemon for a few seconds. Thank you for waiting. Hope to see you again. So, like in any Pokemon game, the healing at a Pokemon Center is free, so make sure you heal up whenever possible. You see that PC over there? That fancy blue one? If you got a Pokemon with you, it's free to use. I don't know how it's free to use a computer if you... Like... Why would you need a Pokemon to use a computer? Like what, does it scan you and be like, Oh, you don't have a Pokemon, you can't use this computer. Like, is this like some sort of biometrics data or something? Anyway, here's your boxes where you can store uh, your Pokemon. Um, we don't know whose PC um, it is though, so because we haven't met the person that runs the boxes in this region. And Rowan's PC is basically uh, a way for you to have Rowan evaluate your decks, uh, no matter where you are. I'm very sorry, but we're working, working underground right now. It's off limits to the public. Please try again later. Ah, uh, night has fallen. And I do love the change in music in, at night. Let's head home. But first, we ran into a Bidoo. Might as well have a little battle on our way home. Scratch it, Hideyoshi. Ooh, a critical. Criticals are nice. If you've never played a Pokemon game before, critical hits will do more damage and they completely ignore any stat changes. So, so if this Bidoof was to raise its defense to the max, critical hits would ignore that. So, if you want to capture a Pokemon, you want to try and weaken it. Get its health to usually the, around the red point is the best time to try and capture. Then pick your Pokeball and throw. And we got a Bidoo. And Hideyoshi even leveled up. Bidoo's data will be added to the Pokedex. With Nerves of Steel, nothing can permit it. It is more agile and active than it appears. And apparently is really loved by the fan base for some reason. <laughs> I don't know if it's because of Mystery Dungeon or what, but people really love this Pokemon for some reason. And used to use it as a slave back when HMs used to be a thing. Anyway. We have returned home to Twinly. I think now it's a good time to stop. In the next episode, we'll go see our mom, tell her we're going to go out on an adventure, and see where we'll go from there. If you enjoyed this episode, do like the video, it helps tremendously. Subscribe if you haven't already, leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this project, especially on my nickname on, on my Chimchar. 
or what do you think of it? And naming him after Hideyoshi. And share the videos, that way more people can discover my content and help the channel grow. And I'll see you later.